I'm Walt, and this is Delta Astrophotography. It's Thanksgiving week here in the United States, and I'm reminiscing about this time last year when I was out in the desert, and I got to use this rig right here to photograph the entire constellation of Orion from a Portal One class sky in Death Valley. Well, this year, sadly, I'm stuck at home, but I've got a lot of wonderful projects I'm right in the middle of, and I kind of actually needed a break from them, so I decided to do something a little different and shoot the Orion constellation one more time, but this time with just a stock DSLR camera, an 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens, and a tripod. It just so happens to be the exact same rig that I'm now shooting this video with right now. So was I able to come anywhere close to what I got with this rig right here? Find out in today's episode of Yeah! By far the most common request I get in the comments section of this channel is can you do something without a star tracker? And normally I just refer them to Nico Carver and his YouTube channel Nebula Photos because he's really good at that. But this time I decided to give it a try for myself. And let me just say the taking photos process was actually pretty easy. I mean, it involves a lot of babysitting the camera and moving it around a lot. But for the most part, that was easy. It's the processing that's really hard. So most of this video is probably gonna be focused on the processing aspect. But before we get into all that, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the gear I used. This is it. This is the whole setup right here. This is a Canon 80D. I used this instead of my T5i, A, because it's not astro modified, and B, it's a slightly newer camera than the T5i, so the view on the live view is actually a good bit brighter. I can see more stars in the live view, and just keep that in mind if you're shopping for a DSLR or mirrorless camera. The older you get, the harder it is to see stars in your live view screen. Now I've got this camera basically on top of a Walmart tripod. I'm using the 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens and we're gonna shoot at 18 millimeters. And attached to the camera, I've also got this remote, also known as an intervalometer. I can use this to take long exposures. I can use this to take a series of exposures. For example, I can say, take 52 photos and it'll take 52 photos without me having to touch the camera. So this is really handy so you don't ever have to touch your camera because you can't touch your camera when you're doing longer exposures. Speaking of long exposures, I think the max amount of exposure time I can get with this lens and this camera before the stars start to trail is about 10 seconds. So we're gonna set ours to 10 seconds. If it looks like they're trailing a little bit, I'll go a little shorter, but I think 10 seconds is the maximum I'm gonna go here. And honestly, that's it when it comes to equipment. It's really that simple. But there's one really important thing we gotta think about, and that's light pollution. We can't be doing this when the moon's out. It's not gonna work, and we have to get away from city lights. We're not gonna be using light pollution filters or anything, so we need to get out to a dark location so city lights aren't blocking out the view of any nebulosity we might be able to pick up. Now, unfortunately, I didn't take that advice very well myself, and instead of going way out into a field, I figured I would be pretty safe. It's a Bortle 3 sky right here in my backyard, but I forgot to avoid one of astrophotographers' biggest enemies, the great and the terrible driveway street light. I know your secrets. So even though I set up on the opposite side of the house as that street light, it still affected my photos just a tiny bit, which you'll see soon. So even though I'm not using a star tracker, I still wanna get as much time on Orion as possible. So instead of taking one 10 second exposure, I'm gonna take hundreds. I'm gonna to try to get an hour's worth of light from Orion. And this is gonna involve me having to move my camera along with the constellation of Orion as it moves through the sky. So I'm gonna to have to babysit the camera the whole night. Well, at this point, let's go ahead and go back in time to the night where I actually shot Orion. All right, let's step outside in the backyard and find a place to shoot. Okay, that was the easiest setup of all time. Orion is right that way. So I'm just gonna take the lens cap off, turn the camera on, switch it to manual mode, and go ahead and dial up my camera settings and get started. All right, let's take a look at the camera settings real quick. I've got my shutter speed set to bulb mode. Aperture is the lowest number I can go, f3.5, and my ISO is at 6200. Let me bring that back up. There we go. I'm saving my files as raw files, as you can see down there in the bottom right. And now let's go ahead and turn on live view. It might be difficult to see right now, but there are actually a couple of stars on the screen. And let's just use the digital zoom buttons and zoom right in on those stars. Okay. 
I actually focused on a distant street light earlier, so I'm pretty close. But we're gonna try to get as close as we can by just turning the focus ring until it's as small of a pinpoint as possible. And you can also see some of the smaller stars come into focus in the background as well. And there we go. I think that's about as good as I can get it. Probably hard to see on here, but there's kind of a small star off to the left that just came into focus. So I think we're good to go. Okay, I've got the intervalometer programmed to take 10 second exposures. We're gonna do about three seconds in between each exposure and we're gonna do groups of three. And after we take about three photos, I'm gonna reframe the Orion constellation. All right, the stars didn't really move very much between groups of three. So I'm gonna change that to about 10. So I'll reframe after every 10 shots. And here's kind of an idea of what it looks like right on the back of the camera. I think Orion's belt was a little more centered when I first started and it's kind of moved over slightly to the right. So I'm gonna go ahead and correct that. And we're just gonna keep going and we're gonna do this for hopefully at least an hour. So I didn't get around to filming the next part that night because I was so tired, but after I was done taking my light frames, I took what's called calibration frames afterwards. And these help correct problems in your images. They're called darks, flats, and biases. And I'm gonna show you how to do them right now. The first called darks, these are gonna be photographs of the noise that your camera produces, mainly thermal noise for when your sensor is heating up during a long exposure. These are super easy to take. You just take your lens cap, put it on your camera, try not to move the focus. Leave all your camera settings the exact same as they were during your light frames and do this right after you're done with your light frames. And we're just gonna take about 30 of these, same camera settings, just with the lens cap on. We'll include these in our stack and it will remove noise from our images. The next set of calibration frames are the most annoying. Some people consider them the most important and some people don't ever take them at all. So it's kind of up to you how you feel about these. They're called flat frames and what they do is they get rid of vignetting and any dust that you might have on your sensor or on your telescope or lens. We'll start taking the flat frames by once again, removing the lens cover. Now what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna cover the front with a white t-shirt or a white pillowcase in my case. I'm gonna to try to get this on there good and tight using a rubber band. See, I'm not very good at this. There we go. Now we need to point our camera at a source of white light. For me, that's just going to be a solid white screen on my tablet. And I just hold it up in front like this. And while we're holding the light source in front of the camera, we're gonna to wanna to turn on our live view. And we're gonna hit this info button until we see our histogram pop up. There it is. I'm gonna rotate my shutter speed dial until I see the histogram spike either a third or about halfway up into the middle, somewhere around here. And that makes a pretty good flat frame. And I'm just gonna go ahead and take about 30 of these, just hitting the button on my intervalometer, just like that. Take about 30 of these. Now when that's done, let's take our white pillowcase or t-shirt or whatever off. Let's put the lens cap back on and let's go ahead and change your shutter speed to the absolute fastest shutter speed your camera has. There we go. Now I'm gonna take probably 50 to 100 of these photos. And what these do is these are gonna remove the noise from the flats that I just took. So now that that's dialed down, I'll just hit the button on my intervalometer over and over. Just like this. Real quick and easy. Get about 50 to 100 of these. Now that we've got all of our images and calibration frames taken, we're gonna go ahead and jump in the computer and stack and process everything. I'll be stacking with Deep Sky Stacker. That's a free program for Windows. If you have Mac, maybe a free alternative would be Cyril. So uh, give that a try. And then first I'm gonna try to process it entirely in Photoshop and not using any paid plugins at all. I might use the uh, Osta La Vista Green plugin, but that's free and you can download that right now. Next, I'm gonna show you how I would process the image in PixInsight using paid plugins from RC Astro, Blur Exterminator, Star Exterminator, and Noise Exterminator. We're gonna see what budget versus money looks like in this scenario. All right, I'm gonna quit talking and we're gonna to get to processing. So the first thing we're gonna do is stack our images. So here we are in Deep Sky Stacker, and we're gonna go right up here to open picture files, click that, and load in all our light frames. I've got an auto save frame in here. That's from when I stacked before when I was practicing for this video. So we're just gonna ignore that and select the rest of the images in here. Just clicking one, holding shift, and coming down to the bottom and clicking the last. Hit open, and there we go. That is a lot of light frames. All right, if we took dark frames, we're gonna come right here to dark files, 
Go to the folder where our darts are saved and select all of those as well. Once again, I'm choosing to ignore this master dart here. That's from a stacking session I've done before. I do not want a file like this ending up in my stack because it'll cause an error and I'll have to start all over. All right, I'm gonna hit open. And if you took flats and bias, let's go ahead and add those as well. Here's my flat frames, adding those and the offsets or bias. Let's add these in as well. Now I'm gonna click check all and register check pictures right here. I'm gonna tell this to stack about 85% of the pictures, throw out all the really bad ones. Let's come over here to recommended settings. And if you see anything in yours that's red, it'll give you a suggestion and it would probably be best if you clicked that suggestion. Everything here seems green, so we're good to go. But I wanna come down to the bottom and point out something uh, specific. If the color balance in the resulting images is hard to fix in post-processing, use RBG background calibration. So basically, if your image comes out looking really green after it's stacked, this will fix that. So I usually check this setting right here. All right, that's really it. I'm gonna hit OK, hit OK again. It's telling me before it throws away the bad photos, I've got a total of one hour and 36 minutes. That's not bad for no star tracker at all, but it's gonna throw some of those away. So we're probably gonna be looking at about an hour or so. And after that, we just hit OK and let it stack. This is most likely gonna take a while since it's so many photos. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video and come back when we're done. All right, we're finished stacking. It has saved an autosave file, I think probably in my light frames folder, but we're gonna go ahead and save our own save picture to file right here. I'm gonna call this one Orion No Tracker for YouTube. I'm gonna save that into a, a folder of my choice and it's gonna save as a 16-bit TIFF file. I think the autosave is a 32-bit TIFF file and Photoshop just works better with the 16 bits, or at least it used to. I don't know if it's gotten better now, but I'm just used to doing this. So here we go, save. And now we're gonna open that up in Photoshop. All right, here we are in Photoshop. Let's get this kind of moved out of the way. That's just some part of the new Photoshop. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is duplicate this background layer right here. I always like to start working from a copy. So you can either right click it and hit duplicate layer, or you can hit control or command J on the keyboard. There we go. Now let's stretch it, make it a little brighter. I'm gonna bring up levels. You can do that by going to the top and hitting image, adjustments, levels, or hit control or command L on the keyboard. There we go. If you look, you can see all the data in this image is all the way on the left where the darks are. So we're gonna take this midpoint slider and slide it right up to that data right there. There we go. We just made it a little brighter. I'm gonna hit okay. I'm gonna repeat that one more time. Control or Command L for levels. Bring that up just a little bit. There we go. It's about as far as I want to go. I don't want to make the stars really big and bloated any more than this. I'm going to hit OK, bring up levels one more time. And this time I'm going to go over here to the darks or the shadows. Right here, I'm going to slide that over to the right, right up to the edge of the data right there. There we go. All right, you might have a hard time seeing this, but the corners are all completely ruined. These are stacking artifacts because the center of the Orion constellation kind of moved around between the photos during the stacking process. So everything in the center looks good. Everything around the edges looks really, really bad. And that's just a problem you have to deal with when you're not using a star tracker or some kind of tracking mount. So right now what we're gonna do is crop a good chunk of this. Go to my crop tool. And just try to get rid of the edges. All right, there we go. Try to get Orion's belt back in the middle there as I can. Eh. <laughs> it's tough. These edges are pretty, pretty rough. All right, I'm gonna hit enter on that crop. Hit my zoom tool here and click fit screen. I usually like to do that. There we go. Now we're gonna do two things. A, if you can see over here in the bottom right, there's a lot of light pollution down here. This is from a street light that was on the other side of the house, but it still caused problems. There's a gradient going from here all the way to about right here, and you can see it starts getting dark in the top left corner. So we're gonna get rid of that. We're also gonna get rid of the stars, so we can try to edit the nebulosity and the stars separately, and then we'll recombine later. 
So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this layer again. This time, instead of hitting Control J, I'm gonna hit Control, Alt, Shift, and E, or Command, Option, Shift, and E. Yes, that sounds complicated, and you could technically just do Control J, but if for some reason you're using layer masks, it's important to use the Control, Alt, Shift, and E, or Command, Option, Shift, and E. And so I'm just gonna use that command every time instead of going back and forth between the two. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click this layer right here that I just created and I'm gonna name it Stars. Now I'm gonna save a copy of it. I'm gonna go up here to File, Save a Copy. And I've created this folder called for Starnet because Starnet version two is what I'm gonna be using to remove the stars. Click on that. I'm gonna name this Orion No Tracker for Starnet. I'm gonna uncheck layers and check this right here and hit save. Save or hit OK again. Quick note, Starnet is a free program that removes stars for you. I'm using the graphical user interface for the GUI version. It also comes in a command line version. And if you have a Mac, the command line version is the only one you can get. And I'm not quite familiar with how to use the command line version yet. So you might have to find a separate tutorial on that. But I'm going to leave a link to Starnet down below, as well as links to any other software you might need. All right, now let's open up the folder that Starnet is in. It's right here. I'm gonna open up the Starnet GUI. Like I said earlier, on a Mac, it's gonna be more like a command line and you could probably find a tutorial on that. But for PC, this uh, Starnet GUI is pretty simple. Just where it says input file browse, I'm gonna to browse to that um, for Starnet folder and there it is right there. I'm gonna open the photo we just saved and down here where the output file is, I'm just going to add the word starless to the name. And we're gonna hit run, and that's all there is to it. All right, we're done. I'm gonna go back into Photoshop, go to file, open, and go to that four star net folder that I created and find the one that says starless. There it is, I'm gonna open that up. And there we go. I'm gonna paste that over into the project we were just working on. So I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna hit Control or Command A to select all, and Control or Command C to copy. Come back to the project we were working on and paste it in by hitting Control or Command V. There we go. The very first thing I wanna do is create a stars only image so we can combine the stars back later. So let's go ahead and name this layer starless. So I should have starless and stars right on top of each other. We're gonna turn starless off by clicking this right here and clicking on stars. Let's go up to image, adjustments, no. Image, apply image. Where it says layer, let's choose starless. Where it says blending, we'll choose subtract. And let's set our offset to one. There we go, let's hit okay. Now we have a stars only image. Now let's go back to our starless image and let's get rid of this light pollution. This is th this light pollution gradient here. I'm gonna create two new copies. So Control, Alt, Shift, and E. Control, Alt, Shift, and E again. And that's Command, Option, Shift, and E on a Mac. I'm gonna name the top layer Blur, B-L-U-R. Okay, now while I've got the top layer selected, I'm gonna go up here to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And basically I'm just gonna turn up this knob right here until you can't really see anything like the Orion Nebula or parts of the Milky Way. It's just all gone. And it looks something like this. I'm going to hit OK. Now you can kind of see a color model, the light pollution model. You see the gradient where it's light down here in the bottom right and dark in the top left. And so now what we'll do is we'll turn the blur layer off right here and click on the layer below it. And we're going to come up to image apply image. This time for layer, we're going to choose the blur layer and we're going to have blending and subtract again. And we're going to change the offset to 30. Offset's kind of how dark your background is. And hit OK. There we go. We removed that light pollution. Let's look at it before and after. That's before. And this is after we've removed the light pollution. That does look much, much better. All right, we can just take this blur layer and drag it down into this little trash can icon down here. We're done with that. Okay, it's kind of optional if you wanna make a duplicate of this layer. I have enough computer memory to where that's fine. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this layer, Control, Alt, Shift, and E. I like to create a new layer for every step I do so I can always go back to the previous step very easily. But if you don't have a lot of processing power and memory, you might not wanna do a new layer for every single thing you do. All right, let's stretch it a little bit some more. I'm gonna open up curves. You can do that by image at the top, adjustments, curves, or control or command M. Let's give it a good little stretch here. I always say this, but you don't want that straight line flattening out at the top like that. That's clipping data that you don't get back. Let's just kind of keep it a nice curve like that and hit OK. Let's bring up levels. Bring up the darks a bit to create contrast. There we go. I might see if I can pull off one more little stretch. I'm going to hit Control or Command M to bring up curves. Bring that up just a touch more. Bring the darks down just a little bit. It's starting to get pretty noisy. Bring up levels, bring down the darks again. There we go. All right, like I said, it's starting to get pretty noisy. I'm gonna create a new layer. Like I said, if you don't have the computer power to do it, you don't really have to. Control, Alt, Shift, and E. I'm gonna come up to Filter, Camera Raw, Filter. I'm gonna find the Detail tab. I'm gonna bring up color noise reduction, then also a little bit of noise reduction. Just kind of try to smooth some of that noise out a little bit. You might go to the basic tab and bring up the vibrance and saturation just a touch. Give it some color. I'm gonna hit okay. And I'm kind of seeing a little tiny bit of green that I don't want in here. It's barely noticeable. You might not notice at all, but just to go ahead and get rid of it, I'm gonna to go to Filter, and I'm gonna run that Asta La Vista Green I was talking about earlier. It's under Deep Sky Colors, Asta La Vista Green. I'm gonna keep it strong and hit OK. OK, some of the green splotchiness that I was talking about earlier is now gone. Now I'm gonna do um, a little bit more vibrance adjustments, but this time I'm gonna selectively adjust it. So let's hit Control, Alt, Shift, and E to create a new layer. Once again, these layers are kind of optional. They just make it easier to go back if you make a mistake. I'm gonna to go to Select, Color Range, and at the top, I'm gonna to choose Highlights. I'm gonna adjust the fuzziness up and the range down until I can see some of that nebulosity down there. There we go. I'm gonna hit OK. Doesn't look like it is selected much, but trust me, you'll see. We're gonna hit Select up at the top again, Select and Mask. And right here where it says view, I just want to make sure black and white is selected. It looks like it selected most of the entire image. So let's go to contrast and start pulling that down to where it's just getting a little bit of the stuff around. Just kind of like that. That's, that's a lot of the nebulosity that I want to enhance a little bit. I turn the feather up till the, our selection is a little bit blurry. There we go. And hit OK. I'm going to come down here and click this button right here to create a layer mask. Now I've got a new layer mask. I'm gonna click on the actual image here. Here we go. I'm gonna come up to Image, Adjustments, Vibrance. I'm gonna turn that up and the saturation up. I'm trying to just bring out the colors just a little bit. I'm gonna hit OK. I'm gonna come back up to Filter, Camera Raw Filter. Maybe try to brighten it just a touch one more time. It is getting very noisy. Add a little more contrast. Maybe a touch of dehaze. There we go. I like the way that's kind of looking. Touch more vibrance. Go to detail. Bring up the noise reduction a little bit more. And we're going to hit OK. Control, Alt, Shift, and E. This is the last thing I'm going to try. I'm going to create one more layer so I won't have any interaction with this layer mask down here. Okay, select color range. I'm going to choose sampled colors up here. Try to click on this little area right here that's kind of orange or, or kind of reddish. This is Barnard's loop. I'm going to adjust the fuzziness and range.
there we go. I've selected a lot of the kind of red hydrogen alpha stuff in here. All right, let's go to select, select and mask. Once again, I'm going to turn the contrast up. Let's see what shift edge does. Yeah, there we go. Just don't want a ton of that selected. Going to feather that a good bit. Not that much. There we go. That's the stuff I'm trying to bring out a little bit more. Create a layer mask. All right, there's our mask. I'm going to click on the actual image. Image adjustments. Well, let's do curves first. Oh yeah, that's probably not a very good idea. That does not look good at all. Leave that alone. Image adjustments. Vibrance again. Let's see if we can just bring out that reddish stuff a little bit more. Hit OK. All right. Not a whole lot more I can do to this. It is just way too noisy and I'm, I just barely have any details in there. Let's do one last thing. Control Alt Shift and E to create a new layer. I'm going to do one more filter camera raw filter. Come down to this color mixer here. Try to bring up the reds just a little bit more if I can. Let's see what happens if I brighten it anymore. Oof. That looks pretty bad. Bring the blacks down. Let's bring that exposure back down just a little bit. Whew, not the prettiest looking image, but we have pulled out a little bit of detail. Let's hit OK. Let's see if it looks a little bit better once we bring the stars back. So let's do that. I'm going to come down here to our stars layer, click it and drag it to the top. All right, now we've got the stars layer on the very top. We're going to come right here where it says normal and change this blending mode to linear dodge add. And there we go. Let's hit control alt shift and E. I'm going to do one more camera raw filter. Let's just do a little bit more vibrance. Maybe a touch of clarity and dehaze and a touch more noise reduction. You can really see how it's kind of messed up in the corners, so I would probably even crop it more. But for now, I'm just going to leave it alone and just go ahead and save it. File, save a copy, and I'm just going to save it in this folder right here for now. Turn off layers, turn this on, and hit save. Before we jump into PixInsight, just know that I've already installed the RC Astro plugins, Noise Exterminator, Star Exterminator, and Blur Exterminator, so they're already in the processing menu. And speaking of processing menus, I've created a list of processing icons that you can download and import into your PixInsight session. That way you don't have to dig through menus to find anything in my workflow. They'll be right there on the right side of your screen. That'll be a Google Drive link that'll be right down in the description below. All right, if you're working with me in PixInsight and you downloaded my processing icons, go to the folder where you saved them. Got the Waltz YouTube icons. I'm gonna drag these over here into PixInsight. And there we go. If for some reason they're not showing up, check these, these four squares, make sure you're on the first one, or at least on the one with the green dot in the middle, because that's where the processing icons should be. And if for some reason they're still not showing up, try to right clicking over here behind this line and click Arrange Icons, see if that helps. And if not, pretty much all of these are in the Process, All Processes menu. Now let's open up our file, go to File Open, Orion Node Tracker for YouTube, there we go. I'm just gonna click this button right here to make it a little bigger, there we go. Now at the top, you have all kinds of different icons and yours might not look the same as mine, but you can, you know, just move anything around like this and your, some of these icons that I use might be hidden back over here somewhere. So if you don't see them, just kind of check for them back over here. But the first thing we're going to do is an auto stretch so we can see what's going on in this image. I'm going to do that by hitting the TV and the nuclear button icon here. All right. You can definitely see how bad that light pollution is and how bad some of the stacking artifacts in the corners are. So the first thing we're going to do is crop all those out by going to process, all processes, and going down to dynamic crop. I'm just going to click over here where I want the crop to start, click, and drag this box over like that. There we go. For some reason it doesn't let you do that and it just gives you this box with a plus sign in it. Just kind of put it right over the edge until you see a tab on top of the box and you can move your crop up and down like that. So there we go. I'm just going to hit the check mark over here. 
We have cropped our image. Zoom in a little bit using my mouse wheel here. All right, next thing we're gonna do is get rid of the light pollution and the gradients. I'm gonna open up dynamic background extraction. Like I said, if you, my icons aren't working, you can find that in processes, all processes, dynamic background extraction. Make sure your photo is selected. There we go. A lot of this stuff seems kind of confusing, but it's really not. I've watched a few videos on how this works and it doesn't seem too bad, but we're gonna to go to model parameters. And I just do this pretty much every time at this point, but change that to two. Shadows relaxation to six. Go to sample generation, default sample radius. That's how big our samples are gonna be. I'm, I like it around 50. And just hit generate. You can see it's created a lot of samples throughout my image. It's trying to sample what the background is and it's completely missed this over here. It must think it's a nebula, but I'm definitely gonna click in here and try to add some samples. It just doesn't like this area at all. And I'm gonna remove samples that are gonna be around where the nebula is. If you've ever seen a picture of Orion, you know that there's a, like a red circle around it. And so I'm definitely gonna to try to click on and hit delete and get rid of some of these sample points just kind of around the center of my image where most of the nebulosity is gonna be. It's probably a little bit over here as well. That should be good enough for now. I'm gonna come down here to target image correction change correction to subtraction. And I just usually discard the background model. If you wanna see just a pure image of the light pollution, don't click that, it'll give you two images. One's the new image and one is of just the light pollution, but I don't really care. So I'm gonna check that. And we can either hit the check or the triangle, we can drag the triangle onto the image. Both of them do the same thing. All right, it's given us a new image, so let's go ahead and close out of dynamic background extraction and minimize our original image we were working on. I'm just gonna drag this over here. And this is not stretched, so let's go ahead and click the TV with the nuclear button. There we go. Still hadn't gotten rid of all of this, but it does look a lot better. Next thing I might wanna try is maybe some color calibration. So I'm gonna come to this right here, new preview mode. I'm gonna click it, kind of draw a little square or rectangle, just kind of in a background area where there's not a whole lot going on. It's just like that. I'm gonna to go to background neutralization over here. Like I said, it's also in the process menu. Process, all processes, background neutralization. Okay, so click on that. Where it says reference image, I'm gonna click on this and select that preview that I just created, preview one. Okay, I'm gonna drag the triangle down onto the image. All right, just kind of neutralize the background colors a little bit. Now let's click on color calibration. Just basic color calibration, and not any of those really fancy ones. See if this does anything. And once again, you could also find this process, all processes, just color calibration. Where it says background reference, once again, I'm gonna click this here and choose that preview. Hit okay. Slide the triangle onto the image. All right, see some of those browns and reds and the dust there, so I'm liking the way that looks. Looking good. Now let's get rid of this preview box. It's right here. Click on it, right click, delete. I don't really see a lot of green, but I'm gonna run this right here. It's called SCNR, it gets rid of green. Once again, it's in the process, all processes menu. SCNR. I'm gonna pull the amount back a little bit to maybe about 70%. Drag that onto the image. And it got rid of any leftover green. There we go. Now it's time to use the three RC Astro plugins. Blur Exterminator, Noise Exterminator, and Star Exterminator. These will all be found in the Processes, All Processes menu. I'm gonna stop saying that from now on because I think you get the picture at this point. First, we're gonna open up Blur Exterminator and I'm gonna come down to this button right here at the bottom that says Reset. Click that just to get everything to default settings then click the triangle and drag it onto the image. Now, basically what this is going to do is it's really going to sharpen the stars and 
maybe even kind of correct some bad looking stars a little bit, but it also sharpens any nebulosity in there as well. So it's incredible. It's a wonderful tool, well worth the money. Downside is it takes a little bit. All right, that is finished. As we can see, the stars are definitely a lot smaller and more tame looking. Let's look at it before and after. There's kind of an undo button, so let's hit that right here. Before, stars are very out of control. After, that looks so much better. Let's kind of zoom in and do that again. Before, whoa, after. Oh, everything looks much sharper and tighter. Love what this, this plugin does with the stars. Okay, let's zoom way in and just kind of check out the noise level in here. You can see it's pretty noisy. Next, we're gonna do noise exterminator. Double click it. And denoise, I usually like to set that about 75%. And drag the triangle right onto the image. Now let's look at a before and after. Before, really noisy. And after. Let's zoom out and do the same thing. Before. After, you really can't tell the difference when it's this zoomed out, but zoomed in before, after. Yeah, this is becoming a very clean image. I'm gonna close this, and now we're about to remove the stars. But before we do, first I'm gonna just rename this to a shorter name. Right click in the image, go to identifier, and give it some kind of short name like fish. All right. Now I'm gonna create a copy of this by going up to the title right here. See, on the top left, click it and drag out. Now I've created a copy. Just minimize one of these so we can always come back to this step later. It's kind of like how we would create new layers in Photoshop. Okay. Now I'm gonna double click Star Exterminator over here, or you could find it in the process menu. And I'm gonna make sure generate star image is checked and we're gonna drag the triangle right onto the image. And it should create a starless image for us in just a few minutes. And there we go, it's given us a stars only image and a starless image. And it does kind of look like overly blown out and pretty bad, but it still doesn't look too terribly bad, kind of like it. All right, so what I'm gonna do now, these are not actually stretched yet. So I'm gonna turn the auto stretch off by going to the TV with the red circle with an X in it and turning off the auto stretch on both images. For my one with the stars, I'm gonna right click, go to identifier and just simply call it stars, all lowercase, stars. That's very important. You're gonna need to do it just like that for later. Let's minimize that and move it down into a corner. Now for the starless, right click it, identifier, and we're gonna call this starless. And we're gonna start our stretching process. I'm not gonna do any kind of auto stretching. We're gonna stretch it manually, just like we did in Photoshop. Close out a star exterminator. I'm gonna do this by coming up to histogram transformation. Once again, you can find it in the process menu as well. Let's open up histogram transformation. And where it says no view selected, let's select starless. And you'll notice if you try to stretch it, you don't see anything happening. That's because in PixInsight, you have to open a preview mode to actually see what you're doing. So let's hit the reset button here. And this circle right here is our preview. Let's open that. Now we can actually see what we're stretching. So this is just like levels. We're gonna move the mid slider over to the left. It's starting to get a little brighter. Once we get it almost all the way over, we're gonna hit this square right here. That's apply. It's gonna kind of apply it twice. That's weird thing PixInsight does. So just hit the refresh button right here, the reset. And now let's do it again. There, we're starting to see some detail now. Look at that. Let's hit apply and then reset. Let's bring the darks over a little bit right over here. Let's do that. Let's hit apply and reset. Now let's stretch it again. Let's bring the, the midpoint over. There, yep, we're starting to see some detail in there. Let's hit apply and reset. Let's bring the darks in. And there we go. Let's hit apply and reset. I'm gonna close out of histogram transformation and close out of this real-time preview. 
All right, what I'm gonna to try to do now is add a little bit of saturation. So we're gonna come up here to curves. And just like with the histogram transformation, or AKA levels, I'm gonna open up a real-time preview. And right here, where it says S, it's for saturation, I'll click that and move that up. It's kind of saturating the whole image, but I still think it looks all right. I'm gonna hit apply right here, the square button. And once again, just like in histogram, I'm gonna hit reset because it kind of stretches it twice in a weird way. And do one more little bit of saturation boost. There we go. Hit apply and then reset. Close out of this and close out of the real time preview. And that's starting to look pretty good. Let me check my histogram again. One, two, Starless is still selected. I could probably drag in the blacks just a touch more, but not too much. Hit that real time preview. Just drag the blacks in just a touch more to the darks. Mm. I don't know if that's helping or not. I'm gonna hit apply, reset, close out of the histogram transformation and the real time preview. Let's open up curves one more time. While saturation is selected, we'll boost that one more time. And I don't see what's going on because I don't have the preview open. So let's hit reset, open this preview. There we go. Now let's boost the saturation one more time. Okay, just a tiny amount. Hit the apply square and reset. Close out of curves and the real time preview. Now we're gonna minimize this for now and work on our stars. Just go ahead and stretch our stars just like we did the main starless image. Go to histogram transformation. And now we're gonna switch from starless to stars. Open up our preview and start moving over our midpoint slider to the left. There we go. Apply and reset. Let's do it again till the stars are about the size we want. If you don't want huge stars, you can stop at any point. Go here, apply, reset. I think one more of those should do me. I kind of like my stars pretty small. There we go. Apply, reset. And that looks pretty good. I'm gonna close out of the histogram transformation and the real time preview. And we'll go to curves. Open up another real time preview. Make sure saturation is selected. And we're gonna bump that up just a little bit. Hit apply and then reset. One more time, apply. Reset. I like how Beetlejuice is getting a good orange over here, but all the other stars are really blue. So let's click the blue channel right here. and Let's bring that down a little bit. Not a ton, just a little bit. Click apply. Reset. Okay, close down our real time preview here. And now we have our stars image and let's go ahead and open up the starless image and recombine them. Now I have an icon for that already right here. You can click that, open it up and just go ahead and hit the square apply button and that should take care of everything. But if for some reason you're not using my icons, you would wanna to go to process, all processes and find pixel math. Now when pixel math opens up, this should probably be blank, but you'll need to write in this equation right here. So just have a good look at that and type that into your pixel math. Once you have that expression typed into your pixel math, I'm gonna click this little drop down arrow down here and go down and select create new image instead of replace target image. You still wanna have your starless and stars only images in case you wanna come back. So create new image. All right, once you got that done, or if you're just using my icon right here, you can just hit the apply button. Close out of pixel math, kind of minimize my starless and stars only images. 
Just kind of drag these into a corner over here. All right, and I'm going to run one final noise exterminator. Open that. Denoise around 70, 75%, and drag it in. And there we have it. That is going to be my final image from Pixinsight. And I'll probably want to crop it some more till about, you know, something about like that. Let's go ahead and compare this to the Photoshop image and see which one we think looks better. So we're going to go to File, Open. All right, I'm going to go to Window, Tile Windows. The one on the left is from Photoshop, the one on the right is from Pixinsight. And as you can see, you can definitely see more of the red hydrogen alpha light in the Pixinsight photo. It's barely even noticeable at all in the Photoshop photo, and that's probably because my Photoshop skills aren't the best. But overall, I do think Pixinsight looks a lot better. I see a lot more detail, a lot more nebulosity in there. Window, cascade windows. Let's add one more final image in here. File, open. We're going to compare what it looks like with a star tracker and a modified camera as well. So on the left here, we've got no tracker edited in Photoshop. Down here, we've got no tracker edited in Pixinsight. And here we've got a tracker also an Astro Modified camera. And this is also edited in Pixinsight. If that doesn't make you want an Astro Modified camera and a tracking mount, I don't know what does. <laughs> All right, we've made it to the end. I know it seemed like we probably could have stretched those images out a little bit more and brought out more detail. But honestly, if you could really see it up here close on my my computer, that does not look good. Any more stretching and I start to see all kinds of color splotches, severe banding, severe noise. So I decided to sacrifice detail for a little bit more clean of an image that just happens to be darker. Well, if you liked anything or learned anything from this video, give me a like or let me know in the comments below. I've got some new stuff to try out. I got one of those ZWO C-Star smart telescopes. I've got some new filters to try out. And on the way right now is a new telescope. I've got a new camera. I'm going to have an entire new rig in the next week, and I cannot wait to share everything with you. So please subscribe for more content coming very soon. Sorry it's been so long since I've made some, but my band's just been so busy, and now we're finally taking a break for the holidays. So anyway, I'm going to get out of here. Can't wait to see you guys next time. So as always, stay spacey, clear skies, watch out for snakes. Later. <laughs>